sometimes there are training films. I like to watch professional athletes um, when they're when they're training. I like to listen to stories of inspirational stories of Rudy um, radio um, the the true stories. Uh, whatever it is that you find that that has uh, Jerry Maguire, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. uh, whatever whatever you find, uh, Rudy, you know the football player, the guy who who wanted to go to the school to be a, a football player, and and he he didn't he didn't he wasn't particularly skilled or qualified, didn't have anything really going for him to do what he wanted to do, but it, he had heart. The Rocky films, uh, oh. you know, I think you get the gist of where I'm going with this, is whatever you find in you that you see somebody who has a dream, uh-huh. and yet there's nothing around them that looks like it has any ch- chance of getting there. It doesn't look like they have skills. It doesn't look like they have the money. It doesn't look like they have the background. You can't see visibly any material way they have of getting there. The only thing they seem to have is a yearning. They they have um, a heartfelt desire. That's the only thing you can see coming from them. And somehow that seems to be enough. And we all respond to this desire because we all want to be happy. We all want to move forward. And we all feel at times that we have obstacles in our way. We all feel that we have to overcome something. We all feel that we have either financial hardship or or physical hardship or emotional hardship in our way. And so... Sometimes we need to see someone go before us and show us that it can be done to give us inspiration. And so when we see that through a movie or a song or a book or a poem, it it seems like, well, if they can do it, then it can be done. Maybe I can too. And so that's what I grab for, the I can too. And so I read something or see something or hear something, and then I, I, I go within myself and I go, wait a minute. If so-and-so did it, and I, see, and I can too, where is it within me that can climb out of this wheelchair and find out what is it within me that can crawl out of here and find my way where I can too? And so I, I start looking. So yeah, it seems like you're find you you, you would find uh, you know your inspiration uh, to keep to 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 move forward through art. Uh, you, you're so you're you're so involved in so many different forms like dancing, writing, painting, acting, music. You 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 have so many artistic interests. Uh, do you feel like that process is therapeutic for you? Very therapeutic, yeah, and and that's that's kind of like why it's the connection with other human beings. It's like thank God somebody went before me and did that, uh, because other people helped pull me out of my own funk by saying, you know, look, we didn't sit back and feel sorry for ourselves. And a lot of these people, you know, because when I was going to physical therapy. There are a lot of people who are a lot worse off than me, and they were doing things with their lives. They were making something of themselves. And so I couldn't feel sorry for myself and just sit back and go, well, this is it. I guess it's over for me. Because I saw them flying forward and making something of their lives. And so they made it very difficult for me to have a pity party. Absolutely. Do you actually speak with, are you a spokesperson, or do you are you involved with certain uh, groups uh, for people that are in similar situations? Well, I've been a member of 12-step programs for 24 years, so I'm constantly involved five, seven days a week um, speaking and in at all sorts of activities, um, sometimes flying places to, you know, um, participate in group activities um, with 12-step programs. Um, it saved my life. It's it's a great 
joy, it's enhanced the quality of my life. And to a large part, um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was the biggest uh, part of getting me up and out of, of a wheelchair and getting my health back and moving again. Uh huh. So, how are you doing now? Are you? Do you feel like? Uh, uh, you do you feel like pretty like, functional? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk anymore. Um, pretty functional, like like you. Know, the, I mean, you look wonderful. So I, I, I'm hoping that you're feeling as good as you're looking. <laughs> thank, thank you. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, no, pretty, pretty, pretty darn, pretty darn functional for. For an old girl who's stuck together with two bits of gum and a thumbtack, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a little spry on uh, cold and windy days, but uh, you know, I, I can still get around. <laughs> well, it sounds it sounds to me like your your story's great, and uh, it's and it's great to hear. For other people who may have their own difficulties, you know, it gives them ideas of maybe, you know, when they're when they're in despair, how to cope. And, and I'll, t- I'll tell you one thing that I that I really want to um, that I found for myself, and I know a lot of people out there don't want to hear this, but but I almost went down the rabbit hole. Uh, they definitely uh, there's there's a a big uh, lure to get you hooked on uh, a lot of uh, pain pills because that's the easy way out, and um, insurance companies will uh, certainly cover, uh, you know, six dollars for oxycontin. But if you ask them to cover for acupuncture or preventative care, well, that's certainly not covered. And so it makes me want to wonder why we want to have an over-medicated society. Right. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I don't turn political, but it's just one thing I would love to know is how come the herd mentality? It's easy to control people who are over medicated on on pain pills, and how many people have you heard who've died lately on oxycontin and all mm-hmm. these things that are six dollars a pop, six dollars for uh, morphine and uh, yeah. pain pills, pain medication. And people are going down over this. People are going out. I mean, that's taking people out faster than anything in this country right now is pain medication. They're not getting hooked because I'm in re- recovery programs. The, the, the young kids coming in nowadays are not coming in hooked on street drugs. It's not so much all of the street stuff that they're coming getting hooked. It's it's um it's over it's it's prescription drugs. Uh-huh. It's it's the stuff like you know Percocet, Demerol, that's that kind of stuff. It's it's mom and dad and grandma's meds. It's prescription drugs. That's what they're getting hooked on. Yes. And that's what they're coming detoxing out of. And it's nasty stuff. You detox off off um, uh, Vicodin. It's some nasty stuff coming off of. Um, but it's 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 not you know street stuff anymore. It's it's uh, prescription stuff. And uh, and why? It's cheap. Cheap. Yeah. Insurance pays for it. Mm-hmm. So I got a little pet peeve with surgeries, back injuries, and pain pills. Addition to pain pills. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Is if you've got any way to get your butt up and out and get moving and away from pain pills, please, please, please do it because they will kill you. Ah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's all tied into the medical insurance and what they'll pay for and what they won't. And, uh, yeah, I've had my, you know, my own personal experiences of something that, you know, you can't get an easy fix for and, you know, and then the, you know, if you don't have, Health, you know, even if you have health insurance, if it won't cover it, it'll cost you like a thousand dollars to to try to get well again. So it's terrible. Yeah. And why do they want to keep you sick? Somebody wants to keep you medicated. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why do you? Why <laughs> is it? Yeah. And, and who's getting kickbacks? Who's getting kickbacks from getting six dollars a pop Vicodin? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Why? Why is it so 